Hey everybody, this is Pestrano. Um, coming at you on this great, what is this, Thursday? Man. Speaking of Thursday, that means the drawing is tomorrow. Um, doesn't look like we're going to hit the 400 subscribers like I hoped for, but we still get to do a giveaway. Somebody's going to get some cool prizes. Um, and that's all fun. Good times here at Pissed Rhino. Um, today I want to review some, some things that, um, I don't know, kind of bother me. Um, you know, it's, it's about modding. Um, and modding, you know, there's bolt-ons, you know, just like in the real car world. You got bolt-ons, and then you got custom. Um, and in your RC build, you kind of want both. Uh, because everybody can do bolt-ons. Everybody can, you know, with all the money in the world, everybody can buy all the same shit. And then it then modding doesn't matter, right? So if everybody can buy the same stuff, everything will look the same, and then it, then that gets rid of it's not modding anymore. It's just that's what it is. So um, I want to go over. I don't do a ton of custom, but I do the little bit, uh, and I try different things, and trying different things leads you into having to make modifications that nobody else is doing. Now, they might do them later after they see that you did them, which is great. I hope, you know, it'd be my hope that everybody watches this channel can, you know, do the little modifications I do on my trucks, uh, can do it to their trucks and have better machines. I want everybody to have the best machines they want. Um, so with that said, let's get into the first one. So the first one I'm going to show part of you, part of it on the stock body as the bad case scenario. And then I'll show you what I fixed on the Blue Ripper. So, please understand that doing, you know, everybody likes, everybody likes this for some reason. It's basically just a bigger link. Um, that's all it really is. But you can put two shocks on it. Um, so if you're running this link with one shock, it really has no use. Uh, so to get this to work on anything, you got to make modifications. Um, you can bolt it right on, but it's not going to do what you want it to do. Uh, so let me tell you. So if I were to use this chassis... And these links, I would have to put my shocks down here in these holes. Or at the top one, which is only 3 millimeter taller. So my shock tops would be right here. So what I had to do was take some... Now these are just bolt-on. These are not the modification, but you know, you buy some... <clears throat> um, shoot. Injora mounts. Now these are not made for this chassis, so you're going to have to do a little bit of modification, which makes it a little bit custom. You got to drill your holes in the carbon fiber to fit these upper shock mounts because they're they're not designed to go together. So that's a little bit of modification you do. That makes it a little bit special. Is everybody going to go buy these links? Or, shoot, buy these upper shock mounts and get them to fit? No, not everybody's going to do that because it's a pain. It's added steps. So that makes it a little, little custom, nothing big. All right, so the next part is this bolts right up, these bolt right up. We got the upper shock mounts where we want them to be so that they're nice and even. Now you can't see what I just did there, but they're nice and even. 
But then you come down here, you got the standard upper links, you got these lower long travel um, trailing arms. Look at that pinion angle. It actually goes down. And you can look at the back. Look at that angle. So what that tells you is that the trailing arms are way longer than the upper links and it's turning your diff like this. So here's your standard diff and it's rotating it because your upper is shorter than your bottom. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I bought these links, these trailing arms. It doesn't work. You know, what do I do? Well, if you want to keep them, you have to do modifications. So, you got to measure. You got to take measurements. You got to figure out exactly what you're wanting it to do. And what I came up with is I needed a, at least a 72 millimeter link on top. I looked all around and couldn't find one for the right size. So what I did was I ordered these 65 millimeter stainless steel brass rods, not brass, oh my God, stainless steel rods. And to make them work, you know, I put the ends on them. That looked good, right? That's perfect. Uh, so put the regular, these are leftover Mias. Um, ball sockets that I had you put the standard ball sockets in and then what you have is a full link just like you would have bought um, from Mias but now mind you you gotta put these on a little further but you can see either way it's going to be a lot longer. And so what that's going to do is it's going to... So we're rotated like this. The top is shorter than the bottom. So now we're going to make the top the longest one. And we're going to rotate that diff to where the pinion angle is upward. So let's go to Blue Beast. As you can see, I've got these badass brand new links that I made um, with parts that you can buy. No real big modification there, just buying the right parts, getting the right parts, and putting them all together in the proper, I mean, proper way. Whew, proper way. So, once I did that, now everything is adjustable these are adjustable you can see i white open these up so now i'm extended by at least five to eight millimeters longer in the rear that's a big difference as you can see my diff goes down and my diff on the bottom I'm trying to get it to where you can see it see how it goes up it's perfect So the Mias links are adjustable. My new links that I just made are adjustable. And by the way, these are strong as hell, so don't worry that they're a little bit skinnier. They look a little different. And maybe I can find brass rods at some point, but I'm pretty happy with this turnout. I mean, the flex is still amazing. But now, Here's the next problem. I extended the rear so much that my drive shaft barely touches and it comes out. This is the only flaw on the GPM axles is that their male end is so short. I don't know why they did that. Now, in a regular TX4M, it's not necessary. I mean, the length is fine. It never moves that much. 
But when you start modifying, really modifying, things don't always fit together. So you got to make changes. So I've ordered some hot racing link or drive shafts, um, and it, they're really long. So hopefully that'll take care of my little issue. If not, uh, I might have to order something else or maybe customize something else. I'm not sure. But that's part of modding is that not everything goes your way. But you got to be able to be quick on your feet, think of solutions, take proper measurements, and execute. And I know we're only talking about RC trucks here, guys, but that goes with everything in life, really. I know, I'm deep. Deep thought. But, so, all of that is how you make the Mia's trailing arms work properly. I mean, it's still got four tire flex on it. Even with the big ass trailing arm, so. Uh, in the rear, you can see, got plenty of clearance servo. Which, by the way, the Mia servos are huge compared to NSDRC. Just like the Endures. They're just way too long. They don't need to be that long. Um, getting into really customizing modding this whole rear end. You know, none of that is in the book. None of that is bolt on. All of that is something that came through my head by taking measurements, by checking on the internet, by going through tons of different parts, different upper shock mounts, different spacers. Um, it can really become a pain. I mean, because you can get your shocks and the upper shock mounts right, but now when you expected to have a 35 millimeter brace, now you only need a 30 millimeter brace. So now you either got to sand down your 35 or you got to order some 30s. Which could take a month to get, which these took about a month to get. So anyway, and the same thing goes with the color coding. I mean, not many people are that anal um, to want everything color coded. But when I started this four ripper project, um, I knew I wanted to have four standout colors. And uh, I think I got that. I think all four of these things stand out tremendously well. Um, I like the blue. I like the green. I mean, I like all of them. I mean, red's my favorite, I think. And I don't even like red. But the way it turned out just looks badass. So. Alright, so that's modifying and customizing making things work that weren't meant to work together now you got <clears throat> modding as far as bolt-ons and then you got modding as far as making stuff work that wasn't supposed to work together um so that's that's what i want to talk about there um this one I haven't had time to work on a ton. I've been kind of busy for the last week for some reason. Not sure what's been going on, but um, anywho, um, I've bought these another set of ramp crab extensions. They're going in red truck, I believe, ruby. Um, then I'll, that means. Every all five of my trucks that I currently are working on has the ramp crab extensions in them. Next up, I want since I'm doing since it's going to be stock body, um, I got the roof light. This is I don't know who makes this, I don't know, it's on Amazon, I think. 
slides right under the roof. Let me move this back down. Slides right under here and stays put. I had one on one of my other builds, uh, but that was one that I sold. Then I got these lights, front and rear headlights, taillights, um, OG, RC. I don't buy a lot of their stuff, but I went through all the lights, and I like the way that these were braided, just like uh, my fog lights are braided. So I went that route. Um, these are just the lights that snap in the factory uh, light holes because I you know I could have well I couldn't have bought it but um, you know the expert light kit for these Traxxas um, they don't work with aftermarket receivers so you know you would waste your money buying those so you had to go with something different and this is what I picked. It says you can still plug it into the blue thing, but obviously we're not doing that. So it'll have roof lights, headlights, taillights, fog lights. Um, I'd like to put some reverse lights in the rear bumper. So I might just buy another set of these OGRC lights to have those as well. And then I'm try trying to get a spare wheel and tire from Mias to put on the back. Um, and then I got the only thing I got to do is I got to order an ESC. I still haven't done that. Uh, it's probably going to be a Lizard Pro. You can get those for like 60 bucks, 67 bucks. So I'll probably just order one of those. I think I got some Amazon credit. Speaking of which, if you don't buy all your stuff on Amazon, you're crazy. Now, some of it might be too expensive compared to like A Main Hobbies. So, if A Main A Main is cheaper, go with A Main. Um, but Amazon, you can buy tons of stuff, and if part of it doesn't work for you, you just return it. The return process is simple. They'll take almost anything. You just got to read. The return policy before you buy stuff but if you buy prime um they'll, you can return anything um and you know for me most everything i get as soon as i get it i can tell if it's going to work or not so a lot of the stuff i don't open the packages um, when i return it if i do open the package i make sure to keep the all the packaging and put it back in the correct packaging because most of the stuff is still good and will work just fine for somebody else but just doesn't work out with my project um but i don't return a lot of stuff so i can have parts for the giveaway too so um everything in the giveaway is parts i've bought for myself but decide not to use them or i had extra or something like that or like you know, like blue truck over there, I bought GPM drive shafts because that's what I always buy. But with the new application of the trailing arms and the length issue, uh, now I got to switch to something else. So I'll have a set of GPM drive shafts. Um, but those won't be going in the box because they'll go in this. Because I have Mias ones on this one. And I love Mias to death, but... Their dry shafts are just junk like everybody else's, so. Look at that. Flex on this stock body. Not bad, right? The tire still moves. Nothing's in a bumper. Just holding it up with a finger. So. What else? So that's what I'll be working on. Stock body. Um, getting all the lights in it, getting an ESC in it, get it running. This one I will probably crawl a lot with. Because that's kind of when I bought this one, or built this one. Bought. I didn't buy it. I built it. From scratch. So, built not bought, right? Need to put those stickers on everything. 
Um, so that's what I'll be working on. I've said that for like three videos now. And I just haven't gotten to it, but I will. Uh, next up, you see my little figures. So I got a 1 8th or 1 24th and a 1 18th person. So I'm trying to figure out which one to put in a truck. See, this guy kind of looks like the right size. But when you set him next to it, he looks kind of small. And this guy, this guy would work too. Seems like he would be a good fit. And this guy can have his arm hanging out the window here and bend it up a little bit to make it look like he's really driving. So I don't know. Give me your input. Guy with the black vest on. Hanging out inside the Blue Ripper. Or guy in camo with a beer. He's holding a beer, isn't that? That's funny. So, guy with the beer. Or guy riding a motorcycle that I'll have to convert to guy driving a truck. I don't know. It's a fun little thing. Let me know. I got one last thing to go over with you guys. Um, and that's a big one to me. We've talked about screws before. Got a weird camera angle here, but it's going to be best for what I'm doing. Um, and I always suggest people get the screws. Now, if you can read through my writing... It's R-C-S-C-R-E-W-Z. So if you want a kit to switch over all your screws to stainless, get the screws kit. Do not get the Traxxas kit. Do not get the other kits. Do not get any kits that come with this little blue lock. Just get screws. But if you're going to be working on these things, building more than one... I found these on Amazon and these are the way to go so I got M2 M2.5 and M3 all of which have every different size so this is every size of M2 some of these you'll never use but a lot of them you will 2.5s. This is, you use all of these in building these trucks. 25 millimeters. You know, that's what goes through the front um, servo mount. So if you're having problems with servo mounts, bam, there you go. And next up is the M3s, which you do not use normally. But when you make modifications like I do, you might need them, which I have M3s in every one of these trucks. And they didn't come with M3s, but anyway. These are all like nine bucks a piece. So let's say you don't want the M3s. Um, the screws kit is $28, and that's for one truck. Two of these are $18, M2 and M2.5, 18 bucks, and I'm guessing you can do three or four trucks. So 18 bucks, and these are real stainless steel. Um, brand, I don't know that they have a brand on them. Um, MC Maskey, 310 piece metric. 304 stainless steel button head socket cap. I mean, I. if you need extra screws or want to convert your trucks over to stainless, this is the way to go. Screws kit are awesome. And if you want it simple, buy a screws kit, but they're 28 bucks. Um, or spend 18 bucks and be able to do multiple trucks. Um, these are all my RC screws I have left. Um, so I do have a ton of screws here. But I never seem to have the right size. Because these trucks take the same size 
of one certain M2.5. Um, so you got to have extras of those and this kit is out of them. That's why I bought these other kits to try them out and see if they worked and they do work. They work great and I will be using them from now on. And buying the M3s, I can use those on my TRX-4 or my Armas or pretty much anything. Um, so that's another tip. Save yourself some money. Buy the screws off Amazon. Um, and it'll be all good in the hood. I think that... Oh... Oh, I forgot. This goes back to modding. I can't believe I forgot this. So, this goes into it. This is another customizing aspect. Um, this is a pretty big one because I don't think a lot of people would think to do it. So these are grub screws. Well, these aren't, but they come with grub screws and they're about that long. So if I wanted this amount of gap, <clears throat> I would, it would fall out. It wouldn't be screwed in far enough on one of these two sides and it would just fall out. So what I had to do was I got an M2.5 I think this is a 20 millimeter and I cut the head off. First, first, I screwed it all the way in to the ball inlet. So I screwed it all the way down uh, with the Allen head. Then when I got it all the way down, I cut this end off of it, 2.5. And then I screwed it into the trailing arm. So now I have ton of distance when it came with very little. Let me see if I can find the stock ones. I don't know if I kept them. I got so much crap here guys. If anybody wants to buy some standoffs let me know. I've got these are 35 millimeters and these are M2.5 or M2. Some are M2, some are M2.5, I think. So, tons of those. Oh, I kind of want to show you this. this one. Oh. I remember where I put them. I'll scoop the camera up a little bit. Sorry. I gotta get to my parts tray. So. Good board. This is the grub screw it comes with. And then this is what I converted into a bigger grub screw. So I have at least two times, if not more, length with what I made. So I screwed this all the way into the plastic because that's the hardest one to screw in. I cut the top off of it and I screwed the rest of it into the trailing arm. I measured it and got the right gap on both sides so everything is symmetrical. And I did the same with these two. When I, when I screwed them into the eyelets, they're all set at a certain position. So as long as you check yourself and do all the appropriate checks, um, you can build your own stuff. 
I don't know. That is what I enjoy. I enjoy getting into the weeds and thinking, oh crap, none of this is working. And then dig myself out of it with my mind. So, and obviously, all this stuff I have over here on the side, I'm going to do the same thing to stock body so that the diff alignment is proper and doesn't cause me problems with binding. Um, with the GPM drive shafts, that'll help get rid of the binding. Um, but with that angle, I'm not going to have much travel because the the uh, GPMs limit your travel based on angle. And the reason they do that is so that you don't get into a binding situation. Um, and that's done on purpose. I know people complain about the strangest things. Um, so that's done on purpose for good reason. I think that's it guys for today um, like I said I'll be working more on stock body build getting that ready oh this weekend I'm going crawling I'm taking the floor rippers for me with me uh, I gotta do some pictures and I'll do some videos I'm not gonna run all of them um, I'll probably run I don't know, red and green, maybe flames over there. Um, blue, I'm not going to crawl with because it doesn't have crawler gears. So, I don't know, I'll crawl a couple of them. Um, and I will not be grinding the bottoms and all that. So, please understand, yes, I'm babying them. But, you know, nobody wants to buy a beat up uh, ripper. So, uh, once I get the videos, the crawling videos, I'll put some videos together for you guys so you can uh, check them out. And I think that's it. So, look for those videos in the near future. Um, but tomorrow is the giveaway, so watch that. Uh, I'll make the list of names today and get it all ready. And then tomorrow, probably, I'll probably do it around two or three, do the drawing, and I'll, you know, record it as I'm doing the drawing, like always. And we'll see who gets some good parts. Um, I wish I could live stream. I mean, I could live. I just, I don't know. Let me know if you guys think I should live stream it. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I fully know how to live stream. Uh, that's my ignorance. I've never live streamed before. I'm willing to do it, but I don't know if it's necessary. But if you guys think it's necessary, let me know and I'll look into it a little bit more. Uh, maybe not do it this giveaway, but maybe do it on the next. Which, by the way, the next giveaway is at 500 subscribers. 500 subscribers, I give away a brand new inbox TRX Forum to one lucky winner. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, win one for your kids, win one for your cousin, uh, win one for your best friend, or if you need it, win one for yourself and build it up. Um, so anyway, I'm pretty excited about that one. This one, I do have a lot of good parts um, to choose from. And I even have stuff that's not in my little buckets over there. So, if you need something extra or something I haven't mentioned, let me know and I'll see if I have any. Uh, maybe we can include that in your prizes. 
again the winner gets to choose you know three to four items uh, depending on you know what I feel they're worth uh, but three to four items maybe more um, so anyway keep all that in mind and look forward to the videos for tomorrow and you guys have a great day I appreciate your time I appreciate you watching my videos uh, and commenting please if you haven't subscribed please subscribe uh, leave a comment let me know uh, and also enter the drawing all you got to do is go to the giveaway video and that was made two weeks ago and comment I'm in and then you're in, then you're in the drawing subscribe comment and you're in that simple all right guys you have a great day and uh we'll talk to you again soon thank you